Hello Android developers! Mofsen is back with another episode of Android developer tips about GitHub Actions. As explained in the CI video, it's a good practice to run tests and build the changes for every pull request to assure the code integrity will be intact after merging the new changes. Likewise, as I demoed in the continuous delivery video, you can take the advantage of mixing GitHub Actions and Firebase app distribution to achieve a quick delivery setup for your app production releases. Companies pay for the GitHub Actions minutes, which based on the selected operating system, increases. The delivery flow should execute for every release merged into your repository's main branch. But the question is, does it make sense to waste CI time to build every APK after pull requests are merged into the develop branch between two releases? Big projects normally have different build type multiplied by different flavors, and it means the CI should run building APKs that may never be used by anyone. When QA and internal testers are trying to test a new feature or bug fix, having a build from the develop or feature branch makes their life easier. But they may not need all different build types and flavors. The QA team tests a feature using one of the environments like dev or staging, depending on the feature and the backend status. So the good news is that GitHub Actions has evolved a lot and at the end of 2021, they announced a new feature that can help to resolve this issue. You can set your flow dispatcher from automatically triggered on merges to manual and while dispatching, it can also ask for some inputs from the user to build exactly the APK that is required. The user can be a developer or a QA team member. Let's see this feature in action using this demo project. There is a flow that builds the whole project for every pull request and a deploy flow that triggers on every code change pushed to the main and develop branches. This sample app has three flavors for development, staging, and production, and two different build types for debug and release. As clarified, we want to stop deploy running for the develop branch to avoid a waste of CI minutes and reduce the costs, and replace it with a cheaper solution. Let's make a copy from the deploy flow YAML file and change the trigger to workflow dispatch. Underneath you can add inputs by defining every field name, a description that shows up in the form, if it's a mandatory field or not, and at the end define the data type. The input data types are boolean, string, multiple choice, and environment based on repos environment settings. In this sample, I define a build type and flavor selector plus a release node that we want to see in Firebase app distribution. For multiple choice fields, you can also define a default value.
The input values are accessible under github.event.inputs. Let's remove the develop branch from the deploy flow and push the changes. FYI, changes won't be visible in the Action tab unless you merge them to your repo default branch. As you can see, the manual flow is now available. Let's say you have done a ticket that requires QA approval that your changes are done correctly and didn't cause any regressions. Here you can select on which branch, which build type and flavor, and with what release note you want your build gets triggered. The execution is done and the APK is pushed to Firebase. This was only one sample usage of this interesting feature and I believe you will go creative and do more using it. Do not forget to comment what else you want to do using this feature. Thanks for watching, I hope you benefit from this tip and do not forget to like and share this video with developers and teams suffering from paying too much unnecessary money for GitHub Actions. See you soon in another Android Developer Tips video. Bye!